Welcome back, the details. Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky on Saturday said his country's force had halted the Kremlin's push to capture Kiev and asked him and urged Russians to pressure leader Vladimir Putin to stop the invasion. In a new video address, he said Ukraine had derailed Russia's plans, stressing that the Ukrainian army was in control of the capital Kiev and main cities around it. He also thanked Russians who spoke out against the war and asked them to keep up the pressure on the Kremlin, saying, simply stop those who are lying to you, lying to us, lying to the entire world. Zelensky also urged Germany and Hungary to back uh, severing Russia from what he called the swift banking system to punish Moscow for invading his country. He added there is already almost full support from EU countries to disconnect Russia from SWIFT and he hopes that Germany and Hungary will have to courage the uh, will have the courage rather to support the decision. Earlier, Zelensky offered renewed assurance Saturday that the country's military would stand up to the Russian invasion. Russian troops suppressed toward Ukraine's capital Saturday after a night of explosions and street fighting that sent Kiev residents seeking shelter underground. The country's president refused an American offer to evacuate, insisting that he would stay. Russian forces pounded Ukrainian cities with artillery and cruise missiles on Saturday for a third day running. But a defiant president, Volodymyr Zelensky, said the capital, Kiev, remained in Ukrainian hands. After a night of airstrikes, there were some signs of panic in the center of Kiev. Reporters saw Ukrainian soldiers with guns and a group of women running along the street. Nearby, Ukrainian soldiers forced a man in civilian clothes to lie down on the pavement. The bulk of Russian forces were now 30 kilometers from the center of Kiev, and Russia had yet to gain control of Ukraine's airspace. Kiev's mayor said there was currently no major Russian military presence in Kiev, but added that saboteur groups were active. The metro system is now serving only as a shelter for citizens, and trains have stopped running. At least 198 Ukrainians, including three children, have been killed and 1,115 people wounded so far in Russia's invasion. On the other hand, Ukraine said more than 1,000 Russian soldiers had been killed. Meanwhile, Zelensky signaled a readiness to discuss a ceasefire and peace talks, as did the Kremlin, but tentative diplomatic contacts have so far produced no results. In addition, Western nations have announced a raft of sanctions on Russia, including blacklisting its banks and banning technology exports. The United States has imposed sanctions on Putin. Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu, and the Chief of General Staff Valery Gerasimov. The European Union and Britain earlier froze any assets Putin and Lavrov held in their territory, and Canada took similar steps. Meanwhile, a rescue worker says at least six civilians were injured by a rocket that hit a high-rise um, apartment building on the outskirts of the Ukrainian capital. Emergency responders have evacuated 80 people separately, Ukraine's infrastructure minister, ministry rather, said a Russian missile was shot down before dawn Saturday as it headed for the dam of the sprawling water reservoir that serves Kiev. On the other side, the Russian military says it has launched a barrage out of cruise missiles at Ukrainian military facilities. Russian Defense Ministry spokesperson Major General Igor Konashenkov said Saturday that the military struck a range of Ukrainian military installations with long-range uh, caliber cruise missiles. He said that since the start of Russia's attack this day, the military has hit 821 Ukrainian military facilities, including 14 air bases and 19 command facilities, and destroyed 24 air defense missile systems, 48 radars, 7 warplanes, 7 helicopters, 9 drones, 87 tanks, and 8 military vessels. Konashenkov claimed that the Russian military has taken full control of the southern city of Melitopol, about 35 kilometers inland from the Azov Sea coast, and said Russia-backed separatists have made significant gains in the eastern region of Donbass.
The Ukrainian health minister said uh, that 198 people have been killed and more than 1,000 others wounded in the Russian offensive. Uh, health minister Viktor Lyashko said Saturday that there have been children among those killed. His statement made it unclear whether the casualties included both military or civilians only. He said another 1,115 people, including 33 children, were wounded in the Russian invasion that began this day with massive air and missile strikes and troops forging into Ukraine from the north, east and south. The UN Refugee Agency says that over 120,000 Ukrainian refugees have left the country since Russia began its attack on its neighboring country this week. Speaking as Russian troops were engaging in battle with Ukrainian forces in the capital Kiev on Saturday, the UN Deputy High Commissioner for Refugees, Kelly Clément, said in an interview on CNN the situation was expected to get worse. She said now uh, um, 120,000 people uh, have gone to all of the neighboring countries and that the reception that they are receiving from local communities is tremendous. She added that most are heading to Poland and Moldova, but also to Romania, Slovakia and Hungary. French President Emmanuel Macron says he is convinced that this war will last and warned that Russia's invasion of Ukraine will have tough uh, uh, repercussions for the Europeans. The European Union, along with the U.S. and numerous other countries, has now sanctions against Russia. Macron told farmers at France Agricultural Fair in Paris on Saturday that sectors, exports and energy prices will be affected by the Russian invasion of Ukraine. The LEC cited Macron also has told the presidents of Georgia, and Moldova, neighbors of Ukraine in Europe's east, that France would support them against any tension or destabilization attempts. The Dutch government has shifted its embassy staff out of Ukraine amid Russia's military onslaught on its neighbor. The foreign ministry announced early Saturday that Ambassador Jens Demal and his staff, who had already moved from Kiev to Lviv before a Russian invasion, will uh, relocate to uh, Jaroslo, Poland. The ministry sent the diplomatic post that is helping Dutch citizens who want to leave Ukraine has been moved out of the country because of the deteriorating security situation in Lviv. Russia has banned airlines from Bulgaria, Poland and the Czech Republic from flying to and over its territory in response to similar moves by those countries. The Russian Civil Aviation Authority said on Saturday earlier this week Russia banned all British airlines from its airspace in retaliation for London's ban on flights to Britain by Russian flag carrier Aeroflot. Back home, Minister of Immigration and Egyptian Affairs abroad, Dr. Nabila Makram, held a meeting with representatives of Egyptian community in Ukraine, including a number of Egyptian students residing in different Ukrainian cities, to follow up with the developments in Ukraine and the situation of the Egyptian community there. During the meeting, the minister stressed not to be carried away by fake news during this period and depend only on data issued from governmental institutions for the Egyptian safety. 